change. The one word that strikes fear into the minds of all men. If it's one thing we have learned over the years is that we are a creature of habit. We are comfortable with where we are. We may not like what's going on around us. We may not like what's being forced upon us. But at the same time, we don't want to change. Others have to change. But we do not. The problem with this is we are the ones that need to change. Now don't take that in a way that we have to bow down to the evil and the wicked that are now controlling our streets, controlling our government, controlling our cities, and yes, sadly, even controlling our churches. We must first realize that God does not change. God is the same today as he was yesterday, and he will be tomorrow. God has laid out what we need to do for ourselves. We cannot allow man to tell us we must change for which whom God is. Because God does not change, man does. We see it today that our churches have changed. They have brought the world into the church instead of the church into the world. If we don't like something, we ignore it. We attack it, we belittle it, we change it. Just because man changes does not mean God will comply. We are asked very clearly to follow the rules, regulations, principles, morals, and values put forth by our Creator. We may not like the sadness that comes for many times throughout our life. The loss of a loved one, the loss of a family member, the loss of a good friend. But these are the changes that in God's eyes are needed. They're for the good. They are a plan that he has for us. Our path in this world before us has already been laid out. It is up to us to acknowledge that path that God has placed before us and to walk it, to understand it, and to accept it without question. When I lost my son at two years old, due to a, a, a terrible, horrific disease, I didn't blame God. God knew what I needed at that time. It is so hard for people to realize that God's plan is God's plan. Why is there suffering? Why is there death? Why is there hardship? Because we need to learn a lesson. We need to understand we will be punished for our sins, no matter how severe or mild that punishment may be. 
if we believe in God and we follow God and we accept God's path, nowhere in the Bible does it say it will be easy. Nowhere does it say that there will not be any sorrow and loss. But we must understand it's that loss that makes us stronger. When my son passed away so many years ago, I didn't blame God. I refused to blame God. But God knew what it would do for me. When he sent the poem through my uncle that had passed away, and that poem made its way to me, it made sense. It was the reassurance of, it was God's plan. My son was innocent and young. Did not know the depths of evil and deception. God took him home. I made his life as contempt as I possibly could for the time that he had with us. And this is what we must look at in these times of today. Many of you know of a, of a man that is now diagnosed with stage four lung cancer. We will lose him, but what is the meaning behind it? The lives that he touched, the truth that he told, will live on. His story will be told. I know many have heard me say it, and it strikes them kind of off or funny. When I say, make, your, make it right with God, it's the same as saying, make your peace with God. Your peace, your salvation, is between you and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is not between you and anybody else. Your heart must change to accept and understand. There is no worse day in any person's life than when their final chapter is opened up and revealed unto them. Our friend, when he, the day he was diagnosed with the stage four lung cancer, his ending was revealed unto him. This is how it will end for you. The same thing I got four years ago. Not cancer, but emphysema. I know where I was then and where I am today. My final chapter had been written and revealed unto me. I know the struggles, the hardship, the suffering that I will go through and I am going through. Every day is a blessing. Every day I thank the Lord for giving me one more opportunity to live upon His great creation. Am I going to cry and be angry and upset and how can God do this to me? No. Because I look back through my life and I see what my life was. Many only see the good. Many only concentrate on the good that I have done and the good that I continue to do. They do not see my sin as I do. I know what I have done in the past. I know how I was in the past. 
I know those that I have wronged, and I know those that I need to repent for what I have done. Nobody else can do it for me. This is where we all must come to this simple understanding. God does not change. Man does. We see today man changing the church to fit their desires. Not God's. If they desire money, if they desire prestige, if they desire a, an understanding of popularity and when they walk in a room, the people, oh, and I'm sorry to say, you're missing the meaning. I am just a mere human being upon this earth. All I can leave behind are the memories of those closest to me. How did they see me? How did they listen? What have I done for them or to them? We cannot change that understanding of how they see us. All we can do is hopefully create an understanding of who we were and what we stood for. Do you stand for popularity and power and might over others or do you stand for others? For the wrongs that is being done unto them? Do you stand for the truth within our Lord and Savior? Or do you stand for your truth as you want it to be? We cannot continue down this path of changing what we want changed that only benefits how we see the world. We need to change to understand how God sees this world, how Jesus Christ sees his disciples and his saints and those that are wicked. We are seeing so many falsehoods and lies and deceptions attacking us every day. Is it for our own well-being? Or is it for our servitude to man? We get so upset, so bewildered at how we are treated by others on the internet, when that means nothing. You need to fixate, I guess, on reaching others with the truth and they can take that truth as they see fit. How much longer I have on this earth, only God knows. How much suffering do I have? A lot. I don't blame anybody. I don't blame any company, I don't blame man, and I don't blame God. My emphysema is mine. The suffering, the days that I just wish that day would end. You wake up in the morning, you get out of bed, and, and, and you can't catch your breath. And the more you go through the day, the worse it gets the harder and harder it is for that next breath. The lightheadedness, the oxygen deprivation, the dizziness, it's all part of it. It's what I deal with. And as I said, when I look back upon my life, my younger years, 
what I did, what I ignored. This punishment is justified. Before the eyes of God, my punishment and my sacrifice and my suffering today is justified. As long as you accept that and blame nobody but yourself, and God will reward you. Love your fellow man enough to tell them the truth, no matter how bad it hurts. And hopefully they will change for the better and not the worst. That's all we can hope for in this world, ladies and gentlemen. That is it. For when our book ends, that last page has fulfilled its destiny in our life. Good Lord will take you home. There are no do-overs. There are no changing of the minds. Nobody on this earth today can stand up for your defense or your persecution. That is between you and the Lord Jesus Christ. That is it. So as we go through these times right now, and a very, very kind and loving person will document what she documents of our friend and his life and his ending and what it means. That is God's will. That is loving your fellow man enough to tell the story of someone else, of someone else's suffering and love and caring. I don't see we have much time left in this world for what it is and how it is. But it is what it is, ladies and gentlemen, and there is no more. So until next time, God willing, this is no way out. <laughs>